put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas, Game of You. Carl Johnson, or CJ, returns to the, the place where he grew up, basically, in San Andreas, with, or more specifically, Los Santos, and meets back up with the remaining members of his family. He didn't return for the funeral of one of his brothers, but now he finally returned for his mother's funeral. Over the course of the game, he will gradually discover who was responsible for her death. Now, when he returns, he finds his family in disarray. The, their hood has been pretty much decimated by crack and a lot of their old turf has been taken over by a rival gang, the Ballas. And basically he now has to prove himself. The others say that he basically ran. He should have stayed with his family. And yeah, he's going to have to prove that he is, you know, that he's good, that, that they can trust him. And along the way, he will deal with some corrupt cops, some, yeah, just various people. There there will be some different, you know, crime syndicates, Italian, Chinese, various things like that, and as usual, you are working your way up, and in this one it's a more personal story. It's basically where Grand Theft Auto 3 was kind of, you just work your way up. There's, you know, we don't really know his personality. He didn't have a voice or much of a personality. So, he, he was kind of just doing jobs for whoever. And in Vice City, it was very much, you know, he wanted to seize power. He wanted to take over. And in this one, it's somewhat of the same, taking over, gaining power. But it is in order to protect his family and his neighborhood. Now, along the way, there is, of course, you know, a number of, yeah, he'll, he'll, there, there's plenty of, you know, perverted sexual, sexuality, drugs, corruption, you know, violence and the like, and yeah, it's, it's a Grand Theft Auto game, very much so. The, I guess a good place to start is the, yeah, the, the physical environment as, you know, the, the overall state is San Andres, which is like Los Angeles, if I recall, and actually Los Santos is like Los Angeles, and there's also the the, the gambling-heavy Las Venturas, which is, you know, like Las Vegas. And, you know, the, the I, sh I should mention, in the, the Los Angeles-like areas, you can tell, you know, there's just the, the huge, you know, population numbers, just, 
yeah, and then we have the San, San Fierro, which is like San Francisco, with its culturally rich streetscapes. This is different than the earlier Grand Theft Auto games in a number of ways. Among them, the fact that this this doesn't only have the city areas, but also rural areas and villages in between them. So when you're traveling between the the, the city areas, yeah, there's gonna be some some areas in between. The 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 in the Las Venturas you can you can literally gamble, you can gamble yourself into debt and like, you know, be whacked if you don't repay your debt. This is one of the most free and open, and it, that, that sounds obvious, it's a Grand Theft Auto, but it really sets a new, a new standard of freedom and just open gameplay for the Grand Theft Auto series. Basically, you can customize pretty much anything about your, you know, your character's appearance. I mean, CJ, as we first meet him, is kind of a blank slate. I mean, he's a young African American, and that's about it. And, you know, you can change his hair, you can get tattoos, clothing, you know, you can change the shape he's in, you, you know, you can bulk up with exercise, which will increase your maximum health, or you can gain weight, and these, you know, you, you can go to different, you know, restaurants and the like, well, you know, fast food joints, basically, and you know, you choose, well, you're gonna have the salad, or you're gonna have, you know, this really fatty food, you know, and characters will react to you based on what what you look like, basically. So it's, you know, of, of these three, it's easily the most, Grand Theft Auto games, it's easily the most immersive and credible. It, it really just, yeah, sucks you in and you're, you're, it, it, it's such a close approximation of the real world, simulation in, in some parts. Now I should mention for those, including myself, who are not huge on role-playing games, I love role-playing game aspects, but I don't play role-playing games straight up. The, the different aspects in this are largely optional. I mean, you're gonna be asked to do each one at least once as a sort of tutorial, just, yeah, you know how games will say, you know, you can do this and you just have to do it at least once. After that, you can pretty much, I mean, I say that, you know, they'll react to your appearance it doesn't, you know, you're not going to be more or less able to complete the, the storyline based on this. There, there are some things that the game does ask you to be able to, some, yeah, but it's, it's fairly limited. It is, the, the game very much allows you to play it like a role-playing game, but doesn't force you to at all. Or yeah, not much at all. The the eating, for example, it it restores your health, but you still you know you can still pick up the little spinning heart to regain your health, and saving also puts you back to full health. So you really don't have to. It's it's very unobtrusive. The the role playing game aspect or aspects, and it's. The, the the basic, the, the main storyline took me 33 and a half hours, and <laughs> that in itself is, I mean, it's been, a, it's been ages since I played Vice City, but Grand Theft Auto 3, with me 
you know, not only doing the story, but also just getting a lot of various things, like, yeah, you know, co completing a bunch of the other stuff, collectibles and the like. I think it was like 30 hours, excuse me, so this is, you know, much, much bigger. And the, the climax, the, the final mission is epic. I just, yeah. So, yeah, let's, let's cover missions some. There, there are a lot of memorable missions. The, the mission design is great. There, you know, there are a bunch of one-offs that are just, yeah, you're gonna remember them. An, an early one, to not give anything away, has you literally racing alongside a train on a, on a, like, bike, on a motorcycle, and you've got someone sitting on the back of that motorcycle firing on, you know, people who are on top of the train is, yeah, is, is really cool. There's, there's a lot more drive-by stuff in this one. You know, the drive-by feature was introduced in Grand Theft Auto 3, but here, if you've got other people in the car with you, they are gonna fire on your, you know, opponents. Like, if you, if you get some attention from the cops and you've got, you know, other people in the car with you who are allied with you and who have guns, they're gonna fire on the police. You know, so you can just focus on the driving. And then there are a bunch of missions that have you do the shooting while someone else does the driving. It's, it's really cool. Now, there are some missions that are just really frustrating. Some, some missions will kind of have you, you know, they, they'll throw stuff at you, especially near, like, ends of sections of, of missions, sometimes even right at the end of a mission, to sort of try to throw you off, to, to make you fail. And this is... It's not the first Grand Theft Auto game to do this, but it is, I mean, at this point you'd kind of wish that they had you know, stopped doing that. It's... Uh, some of the missions I, I appreciate. Some of the missions are short and the game would be shorter without that, you know, yeah, without that trait, but it's still... Yeah, you really wish that they, they didn't. You know, there, there are... There are some missions where you would give your right arm for checkpoint saving, just checkpoint saving, even just, you know, early in a mission, just so you don't have to over and over do the exact same thing to just get, yeah. And a lot of these missions where you're retrying, it's kind of memorizing the path. And I've always thought that a better approach is to just not make it that tough, but sort of randomize the, the, the path and, and, you know, enemy encounters and the like. There, there is some randomization to these Grand Theft Auto games, but in the missions that is somewhat, you know, turned down in, in, you know, and yeah, here, again, you're just, you're memorizing the path and going through that over and over again until you finally get all the way through a mission and yeah it just gets really repetitive and annoying after a while now the a lot of the missions have sort of you know are are just part of a of a larger story where you know, you'll be asked to do something, and maybe that first mission is just the first part of doing that. Like, there, you know, there, yeah, to not give too much weight. Well, some of the first missions are of just working out things in the hood, and you are, yes, I do 
appreciate I'm, I'm way too white to be using these, 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 this vernacular. Anyway, yeah, you're, you're just working out stuff in the hood, and yeah, you know, some missions will have you just, you know, just sort of proving yourself to your, to your old buddies, and not, not saying that you don't do anything, but just maybe you help them with a personal project, or, you know, you're taking back some turf, and the like, and it is very much just you know, it, it's, it doesn't introduce something new every single time. It's, it's very clearly a, yeah, a, a gradual progression towards a, a goal which is set up early in, in such a, or sometimes set up early. There are still twists and, and double crosses along the way. And you might, someone you're working against in, you know, let's say, the first mission, you might be working for in the fifth mission. So, yeah, that's, that's good fun. And, you know, there's plenty of exploration of these characters. And before I go into the characters, I should finish off the mission stuff. The... Some, some of the missions that are especially tough tell you too much in, in just the one mission and it's, you know, it leads to an information overload. And really, the, the mission might not be that tough if you, know, if you could just read the instructions before the mission started or if you got to practice using something before or, or the like. It's also kind of annoying that it still doesn't have a retry feature. You still have to make your way back to the, you know, the, the guy who gave you the mission and go through, you know, and yeah, that can just be a bit annoying when really, you know, especially when you're, you know, over and over just trying the same mission. The... Yeah, so so the the mission yeah the, the mission design is still great with this kind of you know just using these these simple different options to to elements rather to make a lot of different missions you know maybe there's a time limit maybe you have to use a certain car maybe that certain car either has to be returned in tip-top shape so you certainly can't destroy it and if you're driving it to you know the garage where you know it has to be dropped off and you put a dent on it well you gotta get it back to a respray shop you know, maybe you have to kill someone, maybe you have to chase someone, you know, maybe you have to tail someone, so you got to be careful not to lose them, but not to get so close that they realize they're being tailed. You know, all this different stuff. And, yeah, I mean, the missions feel separate. You, you don't really feel like you're doing the same thing. I mean, early on, and in some of the tutorial stuff, there is some repetition, but on the whole, it is very minor. And certainly, the, these portions are very much, you know, if they, if they weren't there, you'd probably have trouble remembering the stuff they teach you. There's a lot of new stuff to learn in, in this one. Now, to, to go into the characters, so basically, you know, you start out in the hood, and over time you move into different areas. You know, the, the first portion of the game is purely in Los Santos, and, you know, mainly in the ghetto of Los Santos. So, you meet a bunch of different, you know, the, the game has a lot of different types from these environments. So, you know, very early on, you have, you know, there's 
you know, there's your brother who just will not give you a break. He is just fed up with, you, you know, the fact that you came back for mom's funeral doesn't mean that you're forgiven for not showing up for, I think his name was Brian, Brian's funeral. You know, and uh, yeah, there's, there's this small group of maybe four or five that, you know, hang out a lot and they'll go, you know, a bunch of the, the different things they do, they'll do together, or maybe you're just working with one or two of them at a time. And, yeah, there is there is this guy who insists on being referred to as OG Look. He, he's, you know, he's just out of prison, and he's, he's determined to be a gangster. And he is not a gangster. He just, he's, he, he's certain he can rap. He's certain he can rhyme. He can do neither. At all. It's, it's just, it's hilarious. And, and he's got this, this voice where he's basically, he always sounds like he's whining. He sounds like he's just, you know, just about for, the, the voice is just about to crack and he's gonna burst into tears. And it's just, it's so much fun to, yeah, and, you know, you'll, you'll come across, there's, there's this really nerdy character played by David Cross, so that's, that's a lot of fun. You've got, you know, Samuel Jackson as a bent cop, and he's, he's actually, he's kind of the leader of this small group of bent cops, and he is awesome. Because he's Samuel Jackson, and he's playing this type of role. It's, it's just, it's spot on, you know, it's, it's, it's like when, when, you know, the, the ultimate, ultimate Marvel Universe wrote, you know, Nick Fury and, and just made him like Sam Jackson. It's, this, this character was made for Sam Jackson. You know, you've got the, there's this... I don't want to give away exactly who, but there is a character who has a disability and he's really not that keen on admitting he has a disability. And it's... It is just... It's in such poor taste, but it is hilarious. I mean, the game... It's like South Park and other various... It sets out to offend everyone. If you, if you play this game for... A, you know, good amount of time, and you aren't offended by anything. The the you know the developers will just be devastated because it is just it is one of the the priorities of this game, as with with other Grand Theft Auto, as with the other Grand Theft Auto games, the one that plays certainly. Yeah, and and they they hit all the all the different notes to to make sure that no one leaves unoffended, you know. You've got the, the, there's, you know, there are some Latinos, basically it's, it's an ethnically diverse game, you know, you've got African Americans, plenty of them, you've got some Latino characters, you've got Asian characters, I think I even saw a Native American, and, you know, actually there, there's this, there's a motel by by the the road called the TP Motel, and it's like you know, and and there are Native Americans around, and uh, yeah. The acting in general is great. The I I believe this is the 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 debut debut of Young Melee, who plays CJ and. He's fantastic. It's just, he's, you know, he's a young rapper, and, yeah, he, he nailed this one. He's just, you know, there is a, I mean, CJ comes into it, and he's basically, he has to prove himself, and there is this thing of, you know, he's... He's very enthusiastic. He really wants to make sure that, you know, he's got plans. And this is in part why 
the others think, that he's kind of just running away, you know, not taking care of the hood and being there for his family. And, you know, but at the same time, he does, you know, once he's back, he very much wants to prove he's back to stay, and he's, he's going to help his brothers out. So, it's, it's, you know, he's, he's a likable protagonist, but at the same time, you can tell there is this sort of, he's not, yeah, he's, he's, he's not like a perfect character, he's not a Gary Stu or anything. And this is also part of where this is, again, it's been ages since Vice City for me, but certainly Grand Theft Auto 3 is very much, you're just making your way in this world that you didn't really, you wasn't really, you weren't really a part of it before. You were a small time crook and now you're making it in the bigger, yeah, the bigger crime world. And Vice City, if I recall, it's also kind of you come into, you know, you arrive at Vice City slash Miami and you're kind of, you're trying to make it to the top of this, where this is very much, you return to a place but things are so broken that you have to build them up from, you know, as if, as if you hadn't been there before. You know, the trust with the family, the, the, the turf, you know, some, some of the, the guys that used to be great, you know, gangbangers, they are very much, you know, yeah, some of them are just useless crackheads now, some of them just, yeah, very various things, and it really works in sort of, um, yeah, it's just, it's a great start for a game like this. I gotta mention that I'm almost done with, with the character stuff and, and acting. James Woods in, in, is in this, and he is just fantastic. He's, you know, again, it's it's like with Sam Jackson. They wrote a perfect part for him. He is just really, yeah, it's it's got that, that you know, snarky, direct kind of gangster thing that he, he plays in, you know, in, in several movies, and it's just a ton of fun. You relish any time that you know, these characters are, yeah. Now, the, the atmosphere here is very much of, of the ghetto. The, you know, the game, the entire, yeah, the, the game very much has that identity. It is steeped in the hood, the, the slang. I mean, if you're not familiar with it, you're gonna, need, you know, like, Urban Dictionary on, um, yeah, just on, on standby, and, and just, yeah, the relationships, the, uh, yeah, the music, basically, you know, all of it is very much, and, in fact, I'd say, yeah, though, again, the ones I've played, the Grand Theft Auto games I've played are very much just in, in the, you know, in this kind of, yeah, they very much have separate identities, and they are just, you know, yeah, f what, what's it called, full, full, immer full immersion, I believe is the term, where they do kind of, I mean, maybe more so, more so with this one than the earlier ones, they drop you in this atmosphere, in, in this environment, and you kind of just have to, you know, make do as best you can. It is, it's not going to be for everyone. Some people are going to be just, you know, I mean, I've said that the game sits down to, you know, offend everyone. Some people are not even going to be, you know, some people are going to balk right at the start. Are going to be like, I'm really supposed to take part in this gang activity. And... The game is not meant for those people, you know, it's it's very much, uh, I admire Rockstar for 
taking that stand, for saying, well, this is, you know, this is it, we're not, the, the player is not some kind of, you know, innocent person who gets, you know, who has to stand by and some, some really bad stuff happens. No, you are part of this awful, awful world that the, the game places you in, and yeah, it, it really, you know, I, as you can probably guess, you know, channel name and, and what, or, I guess, username and, and whatnot, I friggin' love this, I, just the, the atmosphere and the whole, yeah, it was, it was, I haven't enjoyed one of the others quite as much as this one, I will admit. Now, the, actually, yeah, I, to, to mention a few more of the, of, of the characters that I, I really got them. It's got Peter Fonda as a hippie, and that's just, that's a ton of fun, and clearly he had fun with the part as well. Now, the, the relationships are also very much realistic for these, you know, yeah, for these different types. I mean, you, you can really tell the difference between when CJ is with his actual siblings, when he's with, you know, yeah, the way he acts toward the crooked cops, the way he is when, you know, around Latinos, and, and this whole thing, yeah. The game is set in 1992 and uses some of the, yeah, some, some of the stuff that was going around, you know, that, that was happening around this, you know, there, so yeah, there's the crack epidemic, yeah, what, what was going on in Los Angeles, you know, you've got the crooked cops and, you know, the, the Crips and the Bloods gang warfare. Now, the, the the parody and satire is great. It's very much, yeah, it's again just taking these characters and these types and this environment and just really make, I mean, there are things in, you know, yeah, there, there are things in this that make fun of, like, gangster rap and, and this whole thing. I, I really don't want to give away the, the jokes, but just, okay, to give away just one, there's, there's, you know, Laszlo's back, thankfully, and he literally, he asks a, a gangster rapper on, on, on air, why, you know, I, I don't get, with you gangster rappers, why are you so upset? You've won! Stop shooting at each other! <laughs> and it's just, yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the gang war aspect is quite nicely done. I should talk more about the, the parody and satire. It's again, there's a bunch of like silly stuff, you know, the, the various, you know, names of companies and the like are these, you know, kind of silly jokes and, and the like. And yeah, some of, some of the people who, you know, call in on the radios and some of the hosts and the like are very much just these, yeah, these, these extreme types of various different things. But there's, again, there's a lot of, you know, interesting points made and kind of just, you know, it's, it's usually just sort of made extreme. But, I mean, there's, there's a radio show with the, where, where it's like, traveling. It's it's called World Traveler, if I recall, and it's this posh British dude who's, you know, who, who hosts, and it's quite clear. He's like, <laughs> he goes to these exotic places, and he screws children, basically. 
it's, you know, because that's, that's a place he can do that. You know, there isn't enough law and order there, and some of the places might even have it as a cultural norm that you screw kids. And, yeah, it's just... <laughs> It's not a secret that this stuff did happen in in the, the you know the days of the great British Empire, you know, and it, yeah, it it just yeah goes in there and and gets a lot of you know there, there's a, there's a romance show on the radio and literally the <laughs> the female host is like just this obsessed, like, you know, obsessed with love and, like, just, I don't want to give too much away, but, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun with, with that, the, as usual, really inspired material. Now, the, and, and with, with it being set in 92, you know, Grand Theft Auto 3 is from 2001, or set in 2001, which is also when it came out, and Vice City is in the 80s, and so, you know, Laszlo is in all three, so when, when you hear him talking, there's, yeah, you, you can tell he's, in, in this one, he's not quite where he was in the 2001 timeline, you know, part of the timeline, he's, you know, he's no longer in the 80s, portion, it's, yeah, it's, it's just really enjoyable how, although it, you know, there, there actually, there are a few characters also that you, you know, that you meet from those two games, and I'm, I'm not really going to give away, you know, which ones are in what capacity, but they do show up, and yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun seeing you know, where they were before you saw them, or where they are after you last saw them. You know, it, it, it is constructing, you know, Rockstar with these games, this overall... Yeah, just, just overall history with, with these people, and it's, it's really enjoyable. Now, yes, the, the gang warfare is basically a lot of areas, you know, qualify as turf for, you know, basically, you know, the, the hood, area, the ghetto areas. And if, you know, if, if it's Bala's territory, then if you go into that territory and you kill three of them, you, you, um, you start, um, you know, a turf war. And basically, you have to survive a couple of waves of ballas with, you know, increasingly more powerful weaponry and the like. And if you make it all the way through, then that is now your turf. And, you know, along the way, your turf might, you know, not when you're on a mission, <laughs> you know, obviously, but... Yeah, along the way, your turf might be challenged by the balls, and you have to go and kill them to, you know, to re retain that turf. So that's that's quite nicely done. Now the let's see, you you can upgrade, you know. Yeah, I've already mentioned that you can customize your own appearance. You can also customize the the car appearance of you know a, a number of the cars, and some of it is just literally just appearance. But there are also a couple of things that are you know more yeah permanent. You know, giving them giving them features. You can mess around with the, see this is where I, I'm not a car person, but you know, the, the suspension, I guess, you, you can, you can make a low rider, you know, there is low riding in the game, and 
you know, there's, there's like a, a, what's it called? Turbo boost, I guess, you know. Yeah, so, so you're really given a reason, even more of a reason, to keep these cars safe, you know. And before it was, well, this might be a really rare vehicle. In this one, you can also, yeah, make it very much your own. And, yeah, you'll really want to keep it safe then. In general, uh, vehicle stuff, uh, you know, the handling has been slightly improved, if I, you know, I'd, I'd say, from at least Grand Theft Auto 3, not sure about what I say. And the cars are definitely less bouncy than they were in 3, with just, yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll still maybe turn over several times if you, you know, yeah, if, if you, like, make a jump with them, drive off, uh, yeah, if, if you make a jump with them or the like, they might be able to turn be turned over several times, but they are a lot less bouncy. It's, you know, it's very much clear that 3 was kind of the, f the first venture into the 3D approach to this, and a lot of those rough, edge, rough edges has, have now been smoothed out. The, you know, the, the car control is still quite, you know, simple and straightforward, which does, of course, bring up the, the, the flying. It is still really difficult to master, and the fact that the game does force you to fly at least some, it in fact it forces you through flight school and yes to, to start with the, the flying itself yeah the fact that you have to fly in order to just beat the main story I think is yeah really frustrating when you take into consideration just how difficult it is to fly in this I mean 3 didn't force you to fly there was you know some some option of it. Vice City, if I recall, did force you to fly, but in this one, yeah, there's definitely, there's, there's a bunch of flying. It's, it makes sense that they put you through the school, but more on that in a little bit. Basically, part of the problem is that the camera is still very, you know, you, you have to, you know, center you basically, you know, at least how I usually do it is to, you know, briefly look backwards and then, you know, let go of that button and it resets the camera to a proper third person view behind the, yeah, the whatever you're flying at the time. And the, the thing is that. For one thing, that really shouldn't be necessary. The, the camera should just properly follow. And then you have that, in addition to that, you might have to use three, maybe even four buttons, and this is not an overstatement, just to turn the, the plane or, or the like. And I'm not saying that that's unrealistic compared to, you know, piloting in real life. I'm saying that the car stuff, you know, the, yeah, the, the, the cars and the boats that you have to, you know, maneuver are much easier, and those in real life can also take quite a lot, I mean, you're not dealing with, you know, clutch, gear sticks, anything like that, so, yeah, there's, it's, it's far too complicated here to, to fly, and this is where, this is one of the areas where Just Cause is, you know, does better. It, the, the flying is basically as, you know, you use the same buttons as part of it, and it's much more streamlined. In this one, you really have to take care of everything. You, even if you, like, forget to get the, 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 the landing wheels up. 
you'll have trouble taking off. And it's just... It's the kind of thing where the first times where you do it, you're just trying to master one thing, and the game kind of asks you to master all of them at once. And... Yeah, the... the as I've already somewhat hinted at, the controls are really not streamlined, and they are awkward for the flying. Basically, suddenly you have to use buttons that are... Yeah, that, that are usually either not used very much or used for very different things. And... Yeah, it's just there's, there's really no reason that the game couldn't just use the same stuff that... Yeah, that, that other vehicles use. More so. I mean, the the basic, you know, if you're using the the WSAD for controlling vehicle, that's the same for, for flying. But some of these buttons, like, you don't necessarily use that much. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a bit more difficult to explain in detail without any kind of visual, but yeah, it's really not streamlined and you're suddenly having to use keys that you basically didn't really use at all. And, I mean, the, the amount of keys that you have to memorize overall is already ridiculous. I mean, they could easily have combined some of these. And when you then suddenly have to use these... I mean, the, the stuff for... And, yeah, so, so to get to the, to get to the, the school, the flight school, you're forced to go through the entire flight school. And the thing with tests is, tests teach you how to do well at tests. They don't actually teach you things as well as just freedom to explore does. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, I appreciate that tests are still a big part of just regular school, so you can maybe forgive Rockstar for also implying it, but again, I just, yeah, they, they really should just have, have realized this, you know, the, these I mean, they already give you so much freedom in the Grand Theft Auto games, so why they didn't make the, the flight school optional, and even better, just give you the instructions without you having to go through. This is another place where you might suffer information overload. You're, you know, trying to fly, and suddenly it tells you several things, and at the same time, you have to... You know, you can't really pause. If you press escape, you lose both the instructions and, you know, pause the game. So, you know, so, and some of it is just freaking white noise. Some of it is, you know, okay, well, now that you're in air, make sure you fly through those really obvious things that you're supposed to fly through. I know. And then other stuff is like, if you need to do that, press this button and... Yeah, it's just, it would be so much better if they just allowed you the freedom to do it. Because the thing about the flight school is, it's very restrictive. And it doesn't give you a play-by-play, -play. it doesn't analyze what you did wrong. So time after time, I just sat there with just the return of, well, you failed. Something, something made you fail. And I have no idea what. It just gives you the, you know... It'll say, like, the time it took you and if you took any damage. And if you didn't complete it, however you messed up completing it, those are both just... or the, the time is just zero, you know. And, yeah, it's just, again, Just Cause, which came out two years after this, allows you to learn, for example, flying at your own pace. You don't have to just... Yeah, and, and once I was through flight school and I was just flying around in the other missions, in the missions that require flying, that's when I really learned the flying. That's when I 
got good at it and if they had just made the tutorial an option so I could, you know, try the missions and then say, oh wait, I have trouble with this go and find the right instruction you even have to complete it completely like what's it called, linear, in, in, you know lin yeah, linear progression you can't skip something and then return to it later you know, which again if, as you're getting a feel for one aspect of the flying, you might, you know, like, let's say you have to fly around in, in the air. And then the game, you know, yeah, I'm not sure I can really construct a good example, but sometimes you really wish that you could just save one of them for later. But, yeah, and it's, again, it's strange in this so open game that it doesn't, you know, just allow you to learn it yourself. Now, there, there is, at the same time, a lot of fun stuff with the, the flying. You get to fly a radio-controlled plane, for example, and a remote-controlled, rather, and, you know, yeah, there, there's some other stuff, which is a lot of fun there. I will say some of it is made a lot easier if you have a joystick or joypad, but the rest of the game really doesn't require that, and certainly you should be able to play a game, you know, without, excuse me, without such. I mean, again, this is not, this is not a flight simulator. For that, yeah, you'll want a, a joystick, but, you know, this is... A, a bit more casual of a game. You can again. It's there's gotten to be more flying in these, you know, with gradually in these three games. But you know, on the whole, a lot of what you do in these games is up to you. So yeah, you shouldn't have to have a joystick just to make it through. In fact, part of excuse me, part of where. I found that a joystick really helped was some of this stuff is extremely difficult to use without having a yeah a, a proper joystick it's 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 just really difficult with the keyboard and that also leads me to there are several flight missions that predate the flight school. So, yeah, so even with that, you know, and, and, it, and those don't properly give you directions. Not, not enough, anyway. And, let's see, the, the thing with the joystick. lost my train of thought. Maybe it'll come back to me. But but yeah, the, the the flying stuff is where frankly some players might just straight up give up on the game. You know, I've I've read online reviews that really seem like people yeah, stopped at this point and I really can't blame them. And that's yeah, and you know, Rockstar and their you know, uneven difficulty is, is not is not news, but it is sadly also very much in place here. Now the basic yes, in fact on the on the difficulty, this is the easiest of these that I've tried. It it's as if Vice City was, you know, just too frustrating for too many people. So they, I mean, they, they did away with a couple of... Your car tire is no longer extremely easy to knock out. You know, it, it still happens, but it doesn't happen just like that. You know, in Vice City it happens constantly. In this, you know, yeah, much, much less. But this is also just much easier than the others. A lot of the things I found where I had to redo 
a mission multiple times was because I was messing up something that I just didn't really realize how I was supposed to do rather than it actually being too much challenging. Now that is not to say that the game is not challenging. I am not crying Assassin's Creed on this one. D don't worry. In fact, this game really makes you wonder why Assassin's Creed was made at all. At, at this point, it's like the only thing Assassin's Creed really had to offer was the story and the highly detailed recreation of, you know, historical landmarks. I mean, this gives you the, the taking over of areas, and it's, it's more fun than, you know, than Assassin's Creed's way of doing it. In Assassin's Creed, it didn't even show up, you know, right away, it was a couple of games in, and this has you recruiting people and using their their services, and, and it just does all of it better, and I'm... I swear I don't mean to go on these anti-Assassin's Creed tangents, but it's just... These games are so similar, and Rockstar just kicks the ass of Ubisoft at this stuff. I really don't... You broke my heart, Ubisoft. You broke my heart. As long as they, you know, stuff other than Assassin's Creed, I will still give a chance. Just, yeah. Anyway. Yes, so, so the... Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not challenging. It is still definitely a challenging game, but it is easier than... Grand Theft Auto 3, and definitely than Vice City. Vice City was easily the toughest of these that I've played so far. Now, the... And that, yes, so that does still... You know, yeah, it... It, it has challenges, definitely. And... If, I suppose that more or less covers that. Actually, yes, yes, some of the things that they've done here to sort of, to avoid it being, you know, as, as difficult, some of the stuff, you know, it, it, you might call it course correcting to, to avoid that it's too tough, and some of it is just too much, like they took too much of a, of a turn in, in course correcting, you know, basically now you can swim where, you know, Grand Theft Auto 3 in my city, touch water, you die. In this you can swim, and that in itself is fine. And in fact, yes, to briefly talk about that, the swimming, whilst it again has some really awkward use of, I mean, to, to submerge, to duck under the water, you have to press the, the sprint key, and that's just, again, just kind of, Weird. I, I don't really... No, wait. You have to press the primary fire key in order to submerge. And then you have to use sprint to swim at all. Where, if you're not submerged, you just use, you know, forward. as a, and, and you can't swim sideways, which I'm, I think is a, a good call. On, on their part. I, yeah, I don't think that's something you can just do straight off the... yeah. And, and definitely, the sea is a lot calmer than it was in Grand Theft Auto 3, where it was really like hilariously, you know, the waves were just ridiculous. So yeah, here it's, it's much calmer, much more natural. There is sea life, you know, you can swim down and you, you might see some up up top, like, what, what, guppies, I guess they're called. I'm not a sea life person, and, uh, yeah, so, and, and if you swim down below them, you can see, like, the, the bottom part of them, you know, and, yeah, some of the, you know, as collectibles, this does away with the, the slightly silly and calling attention to itself, you know, hidden packages. This has other stuff for collectibles, you, you know, and in the water it means grabbing, like, oysters from, the, you know, from the bottom of, of the sea. 
And yeah, that's that's a great idea. And you of course have a certain what's it called? Lung capacity, which you can upgrade by swimming more, by staying underwater for longer. And yeah, it's very much you know yeah, it functions like swimming in, in these games usually does. And yeah, it's that's a it's a good idea. However, it also makes water basically not at all a, you know, at, at worst war can slow you down. It, it basically won't ever kill you. I've, I tried, you know, I'm, I, I tend to try, try to find limits in, in video games and driving a car into the sea, I mean, it'll, it'll start to remove the, you know, the, the, the lung capacity, you know, the, the air meter will start to, you know, count down, but you don't, like, drown. You can, you can still open the, the car door, you don't even have to, like, struggle to do it. It's just, yeah, that's, that's it. It's, there's, there's nothing to it. And, yeah, and, and in addition, there, there are these train tracks, and even tram tracks, and every so often, you know, something will, yeah, a train or a tram will to head down these tracks, but if you're in a vehicle, they won't destroy you. Like, I mean, I figure that it would do, like, the tank thing of just blowing up a vehicle that it hit, you know, but instead it just shoves the vehicle in front of it. So, yeah, that again takes... Just, yeah, it's... it's they make you a bit too invulnerable in some ways and yeah that just it takes away from this great tension that is you know so ever present in these games and don't get me wrong other than these things it's still very much ever present I mean in Grand Theft Auto 3 you might have to make your way through the you know an area that is dominated by a gang that you've been fighting and in this, that same thing might happen. The bolas, if you're moving through bolas territory, they're going to open fire the moment they see you. So, yeah. Now, the, the game is still very much immersive. Now, the... This introduces a lot of new aspects. And some of the criticisms that this game has received are that some of these, you know, they're, they're basically forced onto the game more than developing naturally, organically, from the, the other game mechanics. And, yeah, to, to a certain extent that's true, and some of them are especially irritating. Squad combat, thankfully rare, is terrible. The, the yeah, your, your guys are just, they keep walking in front of you as you try to shoot. They'll walk right up to you, making you hit them with, with your gun instead of shooting. And a lot of the time they won't shoot, for whatever reason. Now, and other than that, I mean, it's, it's your basic, I mean, you've got a come with me key, you know, come with me if you want to live, and a key that says, you know, stay here. And some of the, some of the AI is also dreadful. It's, when, when, when you have to deal with the squad, make sure that you don't rush ahead in front of them, because they might just completely, they especially lose it near bridges, and like narrow, like alleys and the like, they just cannot figure out how to, it's like they, they, they don't think that there's enough room, so they, you know, rather than following you through the alley, they try to run around, but then they remember, it's, it's like, it's this interesting kind of three laws of robotics kind of thing, suddenly they remember, oh wait, the guy's over here on the other side of the alley, I better go back, oh wait, I can't go through the alley, and they just keep, you can even run around and go back to where they think that, and it still might not fix it. It's, yeah, so that's, 
Yeah, and some of some of the vehicle AI they, they'll drive very randomly. Although this is not this is not too big of an issue. At least I didn't experience it as such. It didn't seem to. Yeah, it it didn't really affect the the overall gameplay. It's not like so many cars do it that you get like blocked. And also, if you ram another car, if you if you hit another car, they're gonna hold a grudge. They're gonna keep trying to hit you until eventually they forget, or if you just lose them by maybe. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if you know it's actually supposed to. Be. I mean. This does take place in like LA and such. I mean, you're not gonna <laughs> drivers in LA are not necessarily the friendliest people. Now the I suppose I should. Yes, yeah, so, so about the, the content added, there's a lot of new content, but very little of it has been refined. And as already someone talked about, it does not really, it doesn't really blend in well, a lot of it. There is some, some sneaking, and it's basically, it's not useful outside of the couple of missions where you're asked to sneak. I mean, it's it's straight up thief with like sound and light. You know, you gotta hide in the shade and you can not only crouch but also walk slowly. So if you're crouched and walking slowly, you're not making any noise. And then you've got, the, the one thing that is actually, that can actually be useful outside of these missions, you can stealth kill. If you're right behind someone, you've got a knife. The thing with this is that basically you do it by aiming at the guy and then using the knife. If you're close enough, it'll work. If you're just slightly not quite close enough, hitting is not... Yeah, it doesn't... It, it just attacks with the knife. And suddenly you might be attacking with a knife, someone who's got like a shotgun. Literally, that happened to me. So, yeah. I don't know why they didn't just set it to, like, alternate fire. They have alternate fire in this game, and you barely ever use it. Like, some of the, some of the stuff that you fly has, like, both machine guns and, like, rockets. That's it. I mean, other than that, you never use this. And this is, again, where I don't know why they didn't just put alternate fire as one of the keys that you use for... A bunch of this other stuff instead of all this yeah anyway now the yeah I I might get into some you know added stuff later it's you know can't recall all of it at the moment now the the sneaking is first introduced as you basically rob a place during the night and you can do this as long as you have a big what's it called yeah big truck you know big enough to get the I, I really like that they did that you know big enough to hold what you're robbing what you're stealing rather the goods you know they still don't force you to only have like two guns on you at any time, and realistically low ammo. No, you can still have thousands of bullets, but when it comes to, yeah, stolen goods, you do need a truck, and it needs to be during the night so that they're asleep, and if you make too much noise, you might wake them up. So you basically have to go into the house with the time limit of, you know that dawn's coming, so, you know, I think it's basically between midnight and 6 in the morning. So you basically, you literally have 6 minutes to do it. And you have to sneak around the house, pick up the goods, and carefully walk back out and load them into the truck. And yeah, that's a way to earn money in this. And 
Yeah, that's, that's good fun. Now, there are some new side missions in addition to, you know, you can still, you know, you can be a fireman, a hospital, a ambulance driver, you know, cab driver, you can do vigilante missions in the cop car where you're, you know, killing the criminals. You can pimp now, which is literally just you're driving around a couple of prostitutes and you also have to pick them up once you know, once they're done, and every so often they'll have a problem with a John who won't pay or who gets rough with the girls, and you gotta deal with that John. You can also, you can be a valet, you know, driving cars into the, yeah, into the parking garage from the, and I feel like there's at least one more, but I'm not 100% certain. There, and there are side missions, there's there's a robbery, you can, you know, you, you can have girlfriends which you can woo over time, you know, just, yeah, various things like that. Now, there are a couple of really large interiors, but other than that, it's you know, and, and certainly you can now go into buildings like you could in Vice City, but couldn't really in Grand Theft Auto 3, or, yeah, there wasn't really much of that in Grand Theft Auto 3. I've heard some people have trouble with, uh, like, the cops will respawn very close, will spawn, you know, right behind you so you can't run away. I did not have problem problems with that, but, yeah, I did have... Something I did experience often was that you'll hear a siren without the cops being after you. And, yeah, it, it happened more often than they were actually after me. So it was kind of... Yeah, it is, you know, you're suddenly like, oh man, what's, what's going on? And, you know, oh thank goodness it wasn't me. You know, you... you you know, instinctively, quickly check, do I have a wanted level, and, okay, no. One thing I, and another thing, some people said that, you know, in reviews, that they experienced that the cop car would drive into them, and then they'd get a wanted level. I did not experience that, so, yeah. One thing I really like that they did, as far as wanted level goes, is you, the respray shops, suspend your wanted level. They don't eliminate it immediately. So now there's the tension of not only do you have to get to the respray shop, which as the other games, you know, will tell you is difficult enough and tense enough, now you also have to make sure that you do not commit a crime before these the wanted stars have blinked away. And yeah, that's that's good fun. Again, the game sometimes will force you to drive very carefully and to not break the law. Now, the... You can recruit gang members depending on how much, you know, what your level of respect is like. You can recruit, uh, you know... Yeah, I don't want to give away how many total, but, you know, yeah. You can recruit more than one. Let's just go with that. And this is quite nicely done. It's it's one of the places where they do streamline controls. If you aim at a gang member and then press the you know the button that also honks the horn and tells him to you know come with me, you you've just recruited a guy, and you can keep doing that until your gang is full, and you can walk around with them, and you know yeah, like I said, if you shoot at someone and they shoot at you, your gang will shoot them as well. You can also get into a car and your gang will also get into the car and, you know, suddenly you maybe have, you know, a car with three gang members in it and they're going to be shooting at whoever's, you know, giving you trouble. So that's, that's good fun. Now, the... Sometimes the map it kind of lacks 
so sometimes it's difficult to tell if something, if an icon is a source of missions, and or if the if these missions have to be completed, or you know if it's just side mission stuff. Not a huge issue, but just yeah, it it can be a little annoying sometimes. You can put in custom markers. And the map has extensive legend. Again, Assassin's Creed, I'm going to stop right there. The graphics are really bad. I, I don't know why. That's like the one place where they really regressed with it. I mean, they are worse than Grand Theft Auto 3. I mean, I played that what, some months back. I remember what that game looked like. This is a lot worse. I Basically, they're like washed out. And, you know, they, there's also sometimes a bit of a lack of detail. It gets straining to look at if you're in an alleyway or a tunnel or the like. Sometimes also cutscenes if they're, like, close. It's especially when it's dark. It just gets awful. There's one point where I literally could not see anything. I mean, I was, like, I was driving inside a tunnel and there was a train next to me. There was lights on the train, and I had the, the, the light on the front of the, the motorcycle. I could literally see nothing but the lights. And then you had the little mini-map. If it was not for that, I was on a mission. If it was not for that, I would not have been able to get through that. And yeah, that's, that's an example, an extreme example of how bad it gets. It does not get that bad often, but it's enough to, you know, you maybe don't want to play this for way too many hours in a row. You know, you gotta rest your eyes at, at some point. Now that I mentioned cutscenes, those have definitely improved from Grand Theft Auto 3. If, you know, they, they have different angles that will cut. I mean, in Grand Theft Auto 3, they were just utilitarian. They were just there to say, well, this guy says that, then you have to go there, this car drives up, you know. Here it actually, I mean, it, it captures the, the energy and, again, the flavor of it. It's, it's very much, yeah, you know, the, the camera will move and just, yeah. It's, it's properly, you know, it's proper cinematography for that. Now, and, and as usual, you can skip almost every single one. So, you know, that's a good thing for when you're retrying the same mission several times. You can skip through the, 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 yeah, you don't have to listen to the briefing again. And the briefings remain vague. I, I appreciate that the missions sometimes have twists, but sometimes you don't even know what, like, the original plan was. If they would just say, I mean, sometimes you can't tell from the briefing what basically the original plan is. And just knowing that might really give you you know, might really help you just to approach the mission. I mean, if they... when the, the game will often tell you follow something. Sometimes that means follow it, don't damage it. Sometimes it means follow it, get to, you know, get close enough, destroy it. And sometimes you'll find this out by doing the wrong thing. You know, you'll destroy a car you were supposed to follow. You'll let a car go, like the one right outside my window now, without destroying it, that you were supposed to destroy. Now, the, the, the camera is now 360 degrees, which is really quite nice, and mostly, at least when you're walking, it's not bad, but it can get pretty bad in, like, with some of the vehicles. I already mentioned the flying and balance and yeah basically when you're driving just don't touch the mouse. It's basically either it it steers the car which you do not want to steer a car with a mouse in this game or it you know, moves around the camera, like, again, you know, 360 degrees around the, the the car. And yet, you just do not want to use the mouse for that, which by itself is basically fine. You don't have to do that, but 
And Enders is another place where, thankfully, they do have you cycle. Like, if you hold down the, the aim key on, you know, the right mouse, basically, it'll, it'll toggle between these, these two, you know, or pull, toggle, you know what I mean. But the, the, one of the bigger problems with the fact that you basically don't want to use the mouse while you're in a car is that you do use it when you're not. You know, the moment you get back out of that car, you do want to use it. I mean, you do not want to run around the streets without the mouse, you know. I mean, I, I think any cat owner will tell you you do not want to run around the streets without a mouse. Basically, that's, yeah, that's the only way you're going to aim even remotely decently. So, yeah, again, I don't know why they didn't just have, you know, yeah, I mean, the, the mouse didn't need to be used for that. And you can't, you can't toggle it off either of the other two. So, yeah. Now. Yeah, so the, the camera does sometimes get really bad, and, yeah, it's, yeah, I, I think I've covered that as much as, now, the, the, the physics of, of the nature stuff is much, is, you know, greatly improved, you can now tell from looking at something if, you know, if you shouldn't, if you should or shouldn't drive into it. Like, if it's a thin tree, you can probably ram that thing with your car and knock it over and you'll just keep driving. But it, if it's thicker, then you can't. So, you know, I mean, that was one of the things in Grand Theft Auto 3. You really, you couldn't necessarily tell, and a lot of it you just could not. You know, you just had to head away from, you know, and yeah, that, that helps a lot, and you can still knock down a lot of fences and the like. That's also something, okay, just to briefly say, this is again a thing that Assassin's Creed did, but that Grand Theft Auto San Andreas does better. You have a lot more freedom of where you can go and how you can get there now, because basically, like again, you can drive through some trees and the like, you can also vault over a lot of, like, fences and walls and the like. Basically, if you can jump high enough that you can at least grab hold of the top of it, you can vault over it from that. And so, yeah, you know, you can do that thing of, you know, running around, running away from a cop, jumping over a fence into a yard, and, and they can do the same, of course. And... Yeah, it's again, it doesn't take away too much, because if you, like, get knocked off a bridge, you've probably lost that chase. Whereas, you know, so, so yeah, it still doesn't take too much away from that. And, you know, I also want to mention some of the paths you have to memorize. If you're on a motorcycle, basically, the game's going to ask you to do a lot of quick turns. And this is, again, where... You know, you just have to memorize, okay, then I have to turn that way, then this way. And if the game, if the mission wasn't as tough, but randomized, so that if you tried it a couple of different times and failed each time, it would be because you need more practice at making quick turns, not that you forgot where the next quick turn was, but that, you know, each turn would, you know, at least potentially be a surprise. I don't mean that they would have to have a ton of different ones, but just two or three different turns with at least most of these turns, that would mean that you didn't know how it was gonna, you know, you'd only know right before you had to make that turn. So you still gotta be good at quick turns. Now, you can now also use a bicycle and there's not a lot to say about that, it's just, you can pedal faster by, you know, tapping forward, and other than that, that, you know, there's nothing really to it. It's, it's just another type of vehicle. 
now the 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 cars now have like I guess the gas cap very visible and if you shoot that the car will immediately explode and why someone would use fireworks during the day I have no idea anyway yes so the I suppose that brings me nicely into that shooting has been dramatically improved and finally is genuinely good. That was like the biggest issue with 3 and Vice City. And now literally this is, I guess that guy just has a leftover supply in the middle of February from New Year's Eve, I suppose. Maybe he had a really, really long hangover and only just came to. So yes, basically, it's it's up to the level of your typical third-person shooter now, which is great. It's just, you know, from San Andreas, yeah, you, you know, playing a Grand Theft Auto game, you've got what you want for, for a third-person shooter and a car game, you know, so, yeah. Basically, you can strafe, you know, you'll get, you might get a slight zoom from, you know, precision aiming, d depending on the weapon, you know, if you've got an assault rifle, it'll give, it'll give slight zoom, and, you know, the you can crouch for, you know, partial cover and increased accuracy. You've got a proper retrieval, you know, aiming to, to aim by, and it will visibly shrink when you crouch. From if, if you crouch and precision aim, pressing left or right will literally have CJ roll, which is great for just, yeah, you know, quit, av avoiding some of the gunfire, quickly getting out of the way, stuff like that. And, yeah, I mean, you will have some problems if you... It's, it's basically when you try to back up while shooting, basically CJ will suddenly be walking towards, rather than back up. That's the thing, here, you know, with the 360 degree camera, you can now move in any direction. If, if you press down, CJ will move towards you rather than, you know, back up. And sometimes this will happen when you're shooting as well. And, yeah, that really <laughs> kills the momentum you were, you know, having there. But that's, that's it. You know, you can, you can properly strafe, you know... The, the, you even have a target health indicator, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great, you know, third-person shooting mechanic. Now, yeah, you can, you know, like I've said, the, there's role-playing game elements. A lot of the stats you have can be upgraded. Your, your stamina, your maximum health, and when you use a certain gun, your skill at it gets upgraded, and eventually, some of the guns, at least, you'll be able to dual wield, which, that's a ton of fun, and yeah, it's, it's, it's great stuff. Now, the one thing that one thing to the, the various mini-games that this introduces is a lot of them are really just quick-time events, just without the... Some, some people call it button mashing, I, I would say more like quick-time events, just without you, like, dying or failing by... You know, you don't necessarily die or fail just by missing one, but you, you know, it might build up score over the course of it, and maybe you have to attain a certain score to complete it which obviously is not the is not a very impressive way to build more into a game to to just you know do do it as quick time events now 
the I suppose that more or less yes that that brings me to the 11 radio stations where you know one of the new things here is as I've already somewhat mentioned is that you now have several different shows with each with their own host you know you've got a news show you've got the aforementioned travel show you know romance show sports show and Laszlo is back as this entertainment host you know interviewing people and whining about his life and the like yeah and the yeah the various different but, and, and yeah, these, these hosts are each very, you know, the, the sports guy sounds like just this total roid freak, just constantly, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he's like doing the laps while doing the show. He sounds like, you know, just, yeah, let's kick their ass, yeah, just constantly, it's, it's just complete jock. Yeah, a lot of fun, and... <laughs> The yes, and and the the music ones also have hosts, you know. Well, again, have hosts, and they're you know a, a lot of fun. Now, the the music includes on on the different radio channels includes house, funk, country, classic hip hop. You know, you've got gangster rap, alternate rock. New Jack Swing, Reggae, Groove, Soul, yeah, and and there's some music on every single channel that I certainly liked, and I would say you will probably find something musical you like in this game, no matter how radioactive you are. Now, the 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 plot and the weather might be discussed. On the on the radio channel, like some of the storyline missions have you doing some really big things that get noticed, and you know, yeah, it'll be covered in the news, and you know, the weather might affect how you're doing as well. The they'll certainly you know certainly when there's fog, you know, when the fog rolls in. So yeah, and now the. The, the radio has this random mix of basically every song is listed separately in, in its own track and then there are ads and the like and there are 12 to 18 tracks per station and they're randomly switched between so it's no longer you know just this one bit where you know once you've heard the, the radio one radio station all the way through, you kind of know where that, what that radio station is like, so you can, you know, you know, memorize it if you like, and, and drop in and say, oh, that's the, you know, that part of it, and as such, in this, not so, and yeah, it, it makes it feel a lot more organic. Now, and, and as usual, you can add your own music, and they'll even put ads in between your music, which is really cool. Again, it, it really feels like a, just, yeah, a real radio station, even with, you know, your own music. Now, there is still, you know, the, the nature stuff still sometimes looks really bad, like trees trees and bushes and the like at worst block your view straight up like there was one I think that was also a, a main mission where I was forced to drive through a small wooded area a forest area and yeah first a couple of seconds there I could not see anything like the the mini mini map radar thing GPS helped navigate but yeah, it's it still blocks view, and yeah, I'm I'm hoping that'll be you know impress improved to impress in the next one. But yes, that quite well covers it. So 
yeah, these just keep getting better and better. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.